always has been, and it still is, a fabulous thing. And we're going to pay tribute to its most famous journey. Me and Jace are going to embark on an old school driving adventure to Geneva in this against the clock. Are we going old school with the. Uh, I've got some cash to bribe the cops. You've got Lovely. Them Sounds good. Come on, Cocker. I can't get in. I haven't actually got in this yet. The E Type's most celebrated mission was an overnight dash from the factory in Coventry to the glamorous Geneva Motor Show. When the covers first came off in 1961, the radical aerodynamic shape caused an absolute frenzy. Jaguar's boss knew he had to immediately satisfy the clamour for test drives, so he rang the Midlands factory and told them to get a second car to Switzerland by 10am the next morning, or there'd be hell to pay. Most cars in, in, in the beginning of the 60s couldn't actually do 70, which was the legal speed limit. Then this comes along, you can do more than double off the bat. Development driver Norman Dewis was the man tasked with the 700-mile race. It seemed impossible, but some very important people were waiting. Three and a half hours gone, and we'd reached our first chance to make up some time on Norman. Back in 61, Norm missed the last boat to Calais, so he had to detour to Ostend instead. His breakneck continental sprint had been compromised. Ours was going swimmingly. And our first mission on the continent filled the old girl up. Now, the quoted consumption is 20 miles per gallon. But I think that's a bit optimistic. But then again, in 1961, it didn't matter, because fuel was 58 pence a gallon, not the six quid it is now. Is that all you've got? Yep, because seemingly the only provisions that Jag test drivers needed, like Norman Dewis, on a job like this, is a couple of pints of milk and a bag of apples. You know, I've got any chocolate. You know what? I like the fact we're using a map because it's so much more manly than using a sat down. With a 3.8 litre straight six, 0 to 60 took 7.1 seconds. That's fast now, but was ballistic 50 years ago. 265 horses under the bonnet. Just, just, just squirt it. Squirt it. I say, ding dong, eh? The speedo has stopped working. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just immaterial, though, isn't it? That means we can go faster. Potentially. We've got an alibi now. Confident we were ahead of Norman's schedule, we allowed ourselves a small pit stop in Reims, France. Prowling through the streets at night reminded us just what a style icon the Big E is and was. It was the car to be seen in in the 60s. Who's that, then? Well, it looks like a middle-aged woman from Alabama. Do you know who that is? <laughs> I haven't got that, a that is Roy Orbison in silky leisure. Look at Jackie Stewart's... Framing the crotch. Look at his suede desert boots. Look at them. I've got a pair of them. My wife wouldn't let me wear them. He's I got... think they're all right. The carry-on team had E-types, did they? Yeah, they were one of the first people to get E-types in Britain. Is that right? Yeah, really. Look at that minx. That's Diana Rig. Great big set of... <laughs> For all the E-Type's undoubted glamour, one of the real reasons it was a hit was for a very unglamorous reason. It was cheap. In the early 60s, the E-Type cost less than two grand. In today's money, this would have been about 38,000 quid, which would have made it more than half price, the equivalent Aston or Ferrari. And yet, and yet it was quicker. And, so they said, the Jag was more reliable. Oh dear. The engine conked out as we arrived in the Jura Mountains, just 80 miles from our destination, and we'd come to a steaming stop. Was this the end of our epic road trip? As we were coming up through there... No, 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 no. Don't, as we... I was merely relaxing. Um, we were, we've been driving... I, I... I've been driving quite leisurely up through this mountainous region, and then I, it just totally lost power. But mm, That's it, gone. Pop the bonnets, a bit of steam, not tons. This, the top of the radiator tank, was not on the top of the radiator. I love this car. This is where it gets I now hate it. 
Water had spilled out of the radiator and soaked the distributor cap. It was dried off and I decided to top up the radiator. No, need not. We're on a main road, there's a lorry driver. Don't matter. I'll put the camera away and be waiting for a sec. <laughs> oh, stop looking, man. <laughs> oh, no, she's got some spark. She'll be right. Show! We'd now fallen well behind Norman's schedule, but determined to finish the journey, we headed for the Col de la Fossile, a 13-mile ribbon of tight hairpins. It's a spectacular 1,300-metre descent into Switzerland and was Norman Dewis's favourite route into Geneva. It's not hard to see why. And after that final workout for the Jag, we arrived at our destination, the very same hotel where Dewis the Jaguar test driver dropped off the E-Type nearly half a century ago to the day. It had taken us 14 hours of driving to complete 700 miles on motorways that didn't even exist back then. So what of Norman Dewis, driving solo non-stop through the night? Did he deliver the car on time to his boss the following morning? Of course he did. In fact, he arrived at 9.50 a.m. with 10 minutes to spare, having done the entire journey, including the ferry crossing, in under 12 hours. That's averaging an astonishing 68 miles an hour. Proper driving, in a proper era, in a proper car. It's essential that the Jag comes alive on a circuit. Porsches make me feel like a driving god, so the F-Type needs to do the same. 